Okay, class, so what we're going to look at today is this 9.5 worksheet that goes with vertex form of a parabola. We talked about this a little bit before, so we're just going to kind of do this worksheet that kind of goes and through and re-explains what each part of the equation is actually doing to the graph. Because we should be able to get a pretty good idea of what the graph looks like based on what the vertex form is telling us. So what we're going to do first is make just a couple notes about what happens when um, the graph has certain characteristics. So for instance, when it is a positive graph, we are going to have a graph that goes up, right? It's gonna smile. And the inverse of that is we're gonna go down here, we'll go negative. And when you have a negative graph, you're gonna have something that frowns or goes down, right? Negative is bad, so it points down. Um, positive is good, so it's going to point up. Right, so that's, those are the first two, just on that A value, right, is gonna tell us that. This, this piece right here will tell us that portion. And then what you're going to have is when A is the value of A. Now this might look a little confusing, but if A is greater than zero and less than one, it is going to shrink. I don't like the way that looks. Sorry, it's going to shrink. And it's going to become wider, right? So you can do shrink slash get, it gets wider. So you have a vertical shrink. And that's going to be any time that it's greater than zero but less than one, right? So typically speaking, a fraction. And then the opposite of that then is going to be anytime A is greater than one, so any number bigger than one, you are going to get a vertical stretch, which is going to make it longer or skinnier. Um, this is going to be a stretch. We're just gonna get more narrow as some of the other words we've used. Okay, so those ones we've known before, affected only really by the A value. Now we're getting into this vertex form, so the K value, right? The K value, which is this guy way out here right pointing to that guy looking at what that where that's at in the equation and that is what's going to shift up so if you have a positive k value it's going to shift your parabola up right it's going to move it up off of the origin and if you have a negative k value so if k is negative it's going to shift it down right so it'll be below the origin so positive k moves it up negative k shifts it down and then finally, what we're looking at is the H value, right? So the H value, this guy, is now going to affect our graph by shifting it. So we go H value. And if you have a positive H value, it's going to shift it left, right? Sorry, this should be touching that line. And if you have a negative H value, it's going to shift it to the right. Right, which is backwards from what you would think, right? But remember, the equation has this negative sign right here. So it's a negative H. So if it's a positive, it's actually, when you pull it out of there, it's going to, be an, it's going to move it to the uh, left side, right? So if you have a positive, it's going to go to the left, and if you have a negative, it's going to go to the right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to work with that a little bit today, just kind of remembering those ideas. Um, we even have, I think I still have the Desmos this is my safari nope that's not my safari where's my safari guys I'm looking like a like a goon it's over here gotcha see if this loads I believe this is where we were at before with this right so you can see your k value anytime it is positive it shifts it up this is that far right number and then your h value is right here so as you can see as you become a positive h it moves to the right. So like in your equation, you're gonna see like a negative H. So maybe I, I did kind of word that confusing. You have a negative H is gonna to go to the right because your H value itself is actually um, positive. So I think I probably explained that a little bad right there, but instead of making a new video, I'm just gonna go back and correct myself, right? So when you have a X, let's go here. So let's say you have X minus four right we're looking at just this component right here 
of the vertex form. Maybe actually be squared, you know, almost plus three. What that really is, you have a negative four, which really means your h value is positive. And so that means it's going to go to the right. And so when I wrote this, I was accounting for if you see a value, if you see your vertex form is x plus four squared, really what you have is you really have a negative four for an h value, which would move it to the left. So you could really look at this either way, so it's kind of confusing in that sense. But if in the equation you see a positive h, like you do here, then it's going to go to the left because in reality what you're working with is a negative 4. And then if we are working with, let's get a different color here. Let's just go here. And if you're working with a negative h, like you have up here, negative h, you're really working with a positive 4, which is why it's going to go to the right in this case. So it's going to be all on how you look at it. I think of it more as like once you pull the h value out, and it's positive, it's going to go to the right. If you pull the h value out, it's negative, it's going to go to the left. However, this, when you're looking at it, it's just how you see it in the equation. All right, so if that made sense, rewind, listen to that again. I promise it does make sense. A little confusing in how I wrote it, though. Okay, so let's focus on this piece because this, this is the main idea here, is we should be able to look at this equation and determine what is going to happen with the graph. So, and again, the best part about this being a video is that you can pause, you can reflect or rewind. And so we can first see that this is just the parent function. So this is not the actual graph, right? This is just, this is what a natural parabola is going to look like. And so this equation does not re represent that one. So this equation we have that was highlighted in light blue is going to open up. That's the first thing we're going to write. And then it is going to, since this is zero, between zero and one, we're looking right here, that means it's going to get wider, right? So it's going to have a vertical stretch. Horizontal shift. Now, if you don't remember, right, what you don't, what, if you don't remember, you're gonna go back up here and look, and it tells you, right? Your H is what tells us that it's going to have a horizontal shift. K is going to be a vertical. So your horizontal shift, you're looking at your H value. Now, in this case, it's a negative 3, right? So it's a negative 3, which means if you pull it out, it would be a positive 3, which means this is going to shift to the right. Or if you look at it just in the equation, you have a negative 3, then we're looking right here at this guy. You have a negative 3, you have a negative H, so it's going to go to the right. Either way, it's going to go to the right. The vertical shift is told by our k value. And in this case, it is going to go up 7. So it's going to go to the right 3, up 7. Vertex now. right? Vertex we can find because it's in vertex form. So we remember we go opposite there. So our axis of symmetry is going to be 3. And then our y value is going to be 7 coming from this value. So we would go over 3, up to 7. We're going to be about right there. 3 and 7. Domain is going to be all real numbers, like usual. So we're going to do all real numbers. And the range is going to be um, y has to be greater than or equal to, or sorry, is greater than uh, what are we at? Seven. All right, greater than or equal to seven. It's never going to be less because we're, we're going to get a shape something like this here in a second. Okay, well, we're going to do that after we graph. All right, so now we're going to fill out this table. And what I'm going to do when I do mine is I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to use this equation. So we're going to have the, the one half, and it's going to take a little bit for me to type this in, but you're going to have the one half. And then parentheses, now x values, right? We're only, we only need to do 2. So I'm going to go 2 to the left. I'm going to work my way back towards 0. I'm going to do 2, and I'm going to do the number 1 for x. So I'm going to go 1 half. What I'm going to type in my calculator to start is I'm going to have 1 half, and then my x value is going to be 2 minus 3 squared plus 7. That's exactly what I'm typing in my calculator right now. So 2 minus 3 squared plus 7. 
I'm going to get 15 halves. I'm going to control enter to get it. It's about seven and a half. So if I plug in two, I'm going to get about 7.5, right? Which really doesn't help. I mean, it's just a smidge above where we were before, which means my three is also going to be just a smidge above. So it's kind of really hard to see from that point. Sorry, actually, that would be at the four. The four is going to be just a smidge above it. Probably not even that much, but that's going to be close here. And then we're going to go up, up, enter. And we are going to change the negative two, or sorry, the positive two, this guy right here, into just a one. All right, we're going to make him a one. We're going to press enter again, and we're going to get a nine. All right, so it's going to be right under the ten, right under the ten over here at about the five. All right, so you can see this is a really wide parabola. It's going to look like that. And this is what the parabola would look like on this one. And so this would be at 1, 9. And these are all going to be opposite. So this was a 4 and a 7.5 and then a 5 and a 9. We have that graph made. Again, doesn't make sense. Go back, rewind it. Don't just sit back and say, well, that was confusing. Go back, rewatch it again. Um, ask your neighbor. Talk to some people. Network a little bit. We'll do one more here. I'm um, looking at B. Um, so we're looking at this equation, right? So the negative sign tells us it's going to open down. It is going to shrink, right? Because this 4 is um, greater than 1. And I know that it's a negative, right? But think about just the value of the number if it's greater than 1. I know technically a negative 4 is less than 1, but 4 is what we're looking at. We're understanding the idea that 4 is bigger than 1 in this case, which results in a shrink. The horizontal movement, again, just scroll back up or flip your paper over. Horizontal shift is caused by the H, right? So we're looking at the two. And that in reality is a negative two, so it's going to shift two to the left. We're going two to the left because that's that real in reality, that is a negative two in our equation. The vertical shift is going to be looked at from our negative three. So we're gonna go down three. And that makes sense when we look at a vertex here. So vertex, we're going to go negative 2 down 3, which puts us about right there for the vertex. And we know it's going to open down, so it's going to take on some sort of this look is what we're envisioning in our brain. So that was a negative 2, negative 3. Plug that in for the vertex, negative 2, negative 3. Domain, again, all real numbers. Range, y has to be, um, what are we going to be, less than? a negative three in this case or equal to negative three i suppose i think your other one should have been equal to yep and that's where we are now we plug in our two values now, and again i'm going to work back towards zero so i'm going to do a negative one value and i'm going to do a zero in this equation so i'm going to go negative four i'm going to go negative one plus two squared minus three and that's what i'm now typing into my calculator so i'm going to go negative four Negative 1 plus 2 squared minus 3. Enter, I get a negative 7. So when x was a negative 1, y was a negative 7. So negative 1, negative 7. And that tracks with what we envision, right? Because we know it's going to have to go down. And then we're going to go up, up, enter. Backspace our way over to that negative 1. Type in a zero, press enter. We're going to get negative 19, which is going to be way down here on zero. So zero was negative 19. And then we just plot those opposites. So we know that this was negative three then, should have been a negative seven. And our negative four should have been a negative 19. So we would have something ended up looking like this right here. And that is two parabolas. Again, just working through that mental process of what is everything telling us? What's the H value tell us? What's the K value tell us? And then plotting out here. So if you watch this whole video and um, it meant nothing to you, then you just got to rewatch it, right? Go through this process. We can get different equations. You can Google different equations in vertex form and kind of quiz yourself over what each piece of the equation is telling you. 
Um, otherwise, this was the goal for the day, just to review and kind of mentally shift things around on a graph before actually doing it, getting an idea of what it looks like. So again, watch it again. Um, otherwise, write down any questions that you have, and we will leave off there tomorrow. Appreciate it, you guys. Have a great day.